uh, are this meeting of the Ways and Means Committee to order and note for the record that a quorum is present. And so our first order of business is to move the minutes from Monday, January 9th, 2023. So Vice Chair Edelson, do you have a motion? Uh, I have a motion to move the minutes from January. All those, yeah. in, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. <laughs> The motion prevails and the minutes are adopted. So on to the business of the day. So uh, I'm sure folks are tracking right along, but we have two bills that we're gonna be doing tonight. Yes, and Representative Nash is gesturing to wonder which we're gonna do first. So we are going to start with uh, Representative Liz Lagarde, or no, we're gonna start with the Kegel bill. So House File 26. So if we could have Representative Kegel is making her way to the testifier stand. Welcome to the committee. We're really glad you're here. Thanks for doing this on the Monday night um, or Tuesday night. I don't know. It's been a day, hasn't it, everyone? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, Representative Cagle, glad to have you here. I will move that House File 26 be re referred to the General Register. So, welcome to the committee and proceed with your presentation. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Members, House File 26 is the um, authorization for MnDOT to spend the excess money that we were um, given through the IIJA reauthorization. And so it's literally a $315 million um, bill with no fiscal note. So that's always kind of fun. Um, but this is really just going through the um, IIJA process. There was an increase of federal money from, um, of money from the federal government. And because last year we ended without a supplemental budget, we didn't authorize the, um, the increase in spending. And so this is um, just authorizing that oh, increase right. of the federal, or authorizing MnDOT to spend that money. Thank you, Representative Cagle. And I'll just note, so the bill appropriates that $315.5 million from the Trunk Highway Fund from fiscal year 2023, and that is why there is not the typical fiscal note we're used to seeing in our packets. Um, any questions? Nope. Representative Garofalo. No, I was going to say thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Cagle, thank you for bringing this bill forward. This is the kind of thing that I think all of us can support, and I would hope we see uh, more individual bills like this going forward, and I encourage the committee to support it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Any further discussion? Madam Chair. Representative Hornstein. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I just uh, wanted to thank um, Chair Cagle for her work on this. And I know members of the Transportation Committee know this, but I'll, I'll share it with the, the broader Ways and Means Committee is that, uh, you know, ever since the IIJA bill was passed in late November 2021, uh, Chair Cagle has taken this on and uh, has really delved into it. She's been on many, many national calls. Uh, uh, she has developed really incredible expertise on this. And, um, and Madam Chair members, this is going to be the first of several standalone bills, I believe, uh, uh, Representative Garofalo, that we have to, to match federal money. And um, this is the probably the biggest federal uh, engagement in transportation infrastructure since uh, General and President Dwight Eisenhower. So here in Minnesota, we want to maximize our ability to you know, um, access these funds. So thank you, um, Chair Cagle, for your work on this. Representative Cleavorn. Oh, no. oh. Any further discussion? Last word, Representative Cagle. Um, I just want to thank the committee for moving quickly on this. And um, Representative Garofalo, there's actually $7 billion coming to Minnesota. Just enough fingers for me to show you that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to thank you guys. And, um, <laughs> Great. So I renew my motion that House File 26 be re referred to the General Register. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion prevails and House File 26 is re-referred to the General Register. Thank you, Representative Kegel. So the next bill on our agenda today is Senate File 40. Representative Lisla, oh, yeah. Senate File 40, yep. And we have with us Representative Lissagard. And so welcome to the committee. And I will move that Senate File 40 be re-referred to the General Register. So thank you for being here and please proceed with your uh, with your presentation. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and committee members. Uh, I wish I wasn't here, uh, but I am. Um, this, uh, this bill is from last year where uh, we need 26 weeks of additional unemployment for the minors that were laid off 
um, at one of the facilities on the Iron Range. And so most of you probably already know that uh, mining is the core industry and there's not a whole lot of other things to do. And so we, since November, there's been approximately between four and 500 people that ha have not had any income um, whatsoever. And so that's what this uh, 26 weeks will do. It'll be retroactive um, going back, uh, I believe until November where they exhausted the 26 weeks. And with me, I have um, House Fiscal to run through everything and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Representative Bliss Lagarde. So Ms. Eng, welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself for the record and proceed with your walkthrough of the fiscal note. Madam Chair, Representatives, Ashley Eng from House Fiscal. Uh, this fiscal note was done for House File 27, the first engrossment. It has an unemployment trust fund in expenditure of $8,418,000 in fiscal year 23 and $1,848,000 in fiscal year 24. 97% is expected to be recovered over several years from, the, from increases to the employer's experience rating. That is the revenue you see in the note. How is this amount determined? The assumption the agency made for this note is that each eligible applicant will exhaust their regular unemployment insurance benefits and the additional benefits in this bill. The agency identified 490 applicants in the unemployment insurance data as potentially eligible for these additional benefits. The calculation used to reach the total fiscal impact is the actual weekly benefit amount of each eligible applicant times the 26 additional weeks, which is the 10,266,000 divided between two fiscal years. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ang. Are there questions for Ms. Ang or Representative Lissagard? Representative Grappel. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Representative Lissagard, I'll be supporting your bill today, um, but I do think there's several ways to help people. I would just ask for your continued vigilance on some of the bills that are going forward in other committees in this chamber and in the Senate that are causing real economic damage to your district and to the Northeast region. Uh, again, I'm voting for your bill to help today, but just please, um, Please continue to fight those things because it doesn't affect my constituents, um, but it does affect yours. So I'll be voting yes today. Thank you. Further discussion? Last word, Representative Lissagard. Thank you all so much. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I renew my motion that Senate File 40 be re-referred to the General Register. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion prevails and how Senate file 40 is re-referred to the general register and members. So next week we'll be meeting at our regular time of 1030. We will have a robust list of bills that you will see. Come, we'll post the agenda and we hope to get through it. Uh, we have to be done by 1245. So we have the ability to go a bit later to process those bills or and or come back on Monday evening uh, after session. So just want to let folks know that we're going to probably have a long hearing one way or another, whether that's trying to kind of power through and be done at 1245 or continue on into the evening um, to have those discussions. But we will want to get through a, a number of bills on Monday so that we can try to stay within that Monday time and not have to have an additional hearing. But of course, this is a meeting at the call of the chair. Uh, so we do have the ability to meet at other times, but that is our hope. We really will keep you posted. We don't want to have surprises for our members or the GOP members. We, I think to Representative Graf point are doing a lot of standalone bills, which means this committee is just really busy uh, right away at the beginning of the session. And so we'll try to do our best to keep everybody in the loop. But just so you know, that's what we're thinking for next week. And we'll keep you posted and you can watch for that agenda to be posted tomorrow. So and with that, we don't have any further business. So we are adjourned.